Okay. Today we have the very talented Sydney Smith, who has been photographing rock and roll musicians from around the world since 1970. Sydney recently had a wonderful show at Shinola Gallery in New Orleans on October 1st. His work is currently on display there through November 30th, with a follow-up show at Shinola on Saturday, November 12th. Sydney. Would you give us a feel for the kind of stories behind a few of these beautiful photos? Sure. Well, first of all, I've been shooting pictures in New Orleans since I was 15 years old. In fact, if you've ever seen the movie Almost Famous, that really was my story. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't about me, but it could have been. Um, I started shooting pictures at 15. My father died at that time. I, I, he was an amateur photographer. He left me with a boatload of cameras, and I just started shooting pictures. And one of the first things I got into shooting was rock stars. Um, it was a lot easier to get close to musicians in those days than it is today, at least major musicians. Um, and when I'm talking major musicians, I'm talking about everyone from Paul McCartney, Allman Brothers, Bruce Springsteen, ZZ Top, uh, Rod Stewart, Rolling Stones. They were all they were all subjects of my camera lens. Um, the warehouse was the music club in New Orleans. Uh, it was like the Fillmore East of the South. And the Allman Brothers Band, uh, they were kind of like the house band at the warehouse. They would play here in New Orleans at least once a month. And I did something that probably no other photographer had thought about doing. I endeared myself to the road crew, because ultimately the road crew can kick you off the stage if they don't want you to be up there. And I shot pictures of the road crew doing their doing uh, their thing. And I'd go and show them the photos I took of them. They'd be ecstatic because who shoots pictures of the road crew? So from there, I got access to the band and you know, I, I kind of assured myself that I wouldn't be messed with on stage. So I had a lot of stage access. But more than that, the musicians gave me access into their personal lives because I was very unobtrusive. I was kind of invisible. In fact, a lot of the musicians, um, you know, gave me the compliment of, you know, just letting me know that I, I wasn't there to bother them. I, uh, I really knew how to stay in the background, but I was also able to capture moments that nobody else had. Um, for instance, um, the Allen Brothers Band um, uh, was busted by the NOPD in, in the summer of 1972. They went back to the hotel rooms and they got busted for drugs. Well, uh, let's just say um, I was in the room at the time, the next night actually, with Dicky Betts, the, uh, the guitarist for the Allman Brothers at the time. And uh, he and his wife, Sandy Blue Sky, who the song Blue Sky was written for, um, were ingesting a certain substance. And they threw that substance into the rug when the uh, NOPD came calling. And uh, the next night, I've got photos of them, you know, getting that substance off the rug of their hotel room floor, uh, something that I can guarantee nobody else has. I've also got pictures of ZZ Top before they grew their beards. I've got pictures of Paul McCartney on Monte Day in, in 1975, um, uh, you know, at Monte uh, They, um, he, he and Linda McCartney were in New Orleans, um, recorded the album Venus and Mars. And uh, that was a major coup for me uh, because the Beatles were my gods. Uh, they they uh, were everything to me. I, I bled the Beatles, I breathed the Beatles, I sweated the Beatles. And uh, in 1974, I went to see George Harrison in concert just as a regular fan paying for a ticket. And that experience was such an emotional experience for me. Uh, seeing George Harrison on stage was like seeing my entire youth on stage. And three months later, um, after having this really emotional, tearful experience watching George Harrison, I get a call asking me if I had, at the time, to work with Paul McCartney when he came to New Orleans to shoot the album. Uh, and I was ecstatic, and I obviously accepted that job. And I spent several weeks with the McCartneys um, in the studio, uh, including Monty Day, 1975, where I've got great shots of him and Linda in their clown costumes. In fact, a funny story, uh, during that time, uh, Dr. John uh, 
was having a concert here in New Orleans, and Paul and Linda dressed up as clowns so they wouldn't be identified as Paul McCartney. And they were so well disguised that Dr. John's road crew kicked him off the stage, physically threw McCartney off the stage. And I saw Dr. John recently, he talked about that, and uh, he still laughs about that. Yeah, he threw McCartney off the stage at my concert. You know, so it was, uh, it, it, it. But this picture is me and Dr. John recently, and Dr. John is writing to me, hey, Sydney, uh, in, in his own words, yeah, you're the best flickinologist I ever done seen. So that's that's me and Dr. John, not too long ago. Another interesting shot, this is me and Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top. In this picture, uh, this was taken many years ago, but uh, I'm holding a shot that I took of Billy Gibbons many years earlier, uh, beardless Billy Gibbons, and um, and more recently than this picture even, I saw Billy Gibbons not too long ago here in New Orleans, and we, we did a reunion picture where I'm holding a picture of a picture of a picture. So we, we have some, some history there. But, you know, the best thing I can tell you is come see the exhibit because you're going to see photos that nobody has. Um, and some of these rock stars are still very relevant today. Um, some are not, but uh, most of them are. And I'm talking about major ones. The Rolling Stones, Mick Jack, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, all the Brothers Band, still very popular today. Um, I've got photos of many dead rock stars, unfortunately. Uh, Shortly after I took the photos, you know, they left us for one reason or another. Dwayne Allman, I've got shots of him just a few weeks before he died in a very tragic motorcycle accident in 1971. But, um, you know, all I can tell you is come out and see the exhibit and uh, you'll see why uh, you should come home with one of these photos. It's, it's a little bit of history. 40 years of rock and roll history. Thank you so much, Sydney, and uh, definitely be sure to check out the show November 12th, 1813 Martin Luther King Boulevard at Shinola Gallery. We'll see you there.